Could you buy a hamburger with good United States currency? It might not be so easy tonight on... People are funny! Yes, transcribed from Hollywood, John Goodell's production of People Are Funny brought to you by Forever Yours and Milky Way Candy Bars. Two quality bars made famous by Mars. And now here is America's top master of ceremonies, Art Linkletter. Ladies and gentlemen, here hanging from a small peg on my Hollywood and Vine sign is a little milk bucket. And inside that bucket is one gallon of liquid that is worth $2,500 in cash and which will figure in a very interesting stunt a little later in the show. I won't tell you what kind of liquid it is, but it's very interesting. I realize that most of you people, many of you tourists and travelers from elsewhere, have come to Hollywood in search of education and culture and that you're not interested in money. However, I am holding in my hands now, ladies and gentlemen, a bill, and I wonder if anybody is interested in taking a closer look at it. Some man. Let's see some man here. Well, um, how about this fellow right here? How do you do, sir? You just uh, come right down here. What's your name? Uh, Mr. Joe Schaefer. First of all, we'd like you to have a Milky Way six-pack. Where are you from, Joe? Toronto, Canada, sir. Oh, Canadian. Yes, sir. What do you do up there, Joe? I repair radio and television. What am I holding here in my hand? Man, a hundred dollar bill. A thousand dollar bill. Yeah, look at all those zeros. There's not a hundred. That's a thousand, Joe. One thousand. Now look, Joe. How would you like to spend a couple of weeks in peace and contentment, sleeping late, no worries about money or anything? Geez, I'd love that. You would. In other words, you'd like to be a bum, huh? Yeah. Well, all right. John, uh, take his coat off here. And uh, put on the old uh, coat and the old hat. Make him look like a bum. We want to dress him up kind of like a like a bum. All right, now you look a little disreputable. Now, here is the thousand dollar bill. Just imagine, just think how it feels to have that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, of course, it isn't yours. I say, just think how it yeah. feels, <laughs> because the thousand dollar bill is only for the use in an experiment. Which, if it works out right, you will win a beautiful Stromberg Carlson television set. Now, here's what we want you to do. Listen carefully. If you can go out of this theater and come back before the end of the show and have this $1,000 bill cashed, in other words, get change and bring it back, you will get the television set. Now, that sounds okay? Fine. I'm on my way. Wait. Wait. (laughs) Not so fast. It isn't quite that easy. Now, here's the way we want you to do it. You are to go up to the corner, first of all, near Selma and Vine, where there's a hot dog stand. Yes. We want you to just drop up to the counter, order a hot dog, with or without onions, take a bite, and start to eat. Then you lo- lay down the $1,000 bill on the counter. You got that? Yes. Now, of course, if they don't have change, you could get change from your own pocket, couldn't you? My money's in my other pocket. Oh, in your other coat pocket? Yeah. Oh, well, then it's gone. Just leave it. You don't have any other money. Now, supposing that you have no change, which you have none, what will happen? I don't know. (laughs) Well, we don't either. You look like a bum. Why should a guy who looks like a bum have a $1,000 bill and no change? I don't know, but I have it. That's right. And if the storekeeper tries to take the hot dog back, don't give it back to him. It's yours. You offer him the money. If he can't change it, it isn't your fault, is it? That's right. But what if he mistakes for a $1 bill or something like that? Oh, well, then you've got to get it back. Oh, I see. Now... If, if he tells you to go on, you go other places. Oh, In other words, try the drugstore, buy some gum, open a piece, start chewing, and then lay the $1,000 bill down. We want to find out what will happen to a man with only a $1,000 bill buying articles under 50 cents and eating part of each one before you pay the 1000 Under 50 cents. Under 50 cents. Now, if a policeman is called. You know your rights, don't you? Yes. What are your rights? I have money. I have a thousand dollars. That's right. And, and I'm not doing nothing wrong. He can't change my money. That's all. And you remember that. Keep that in your mind. Yeah. And by morning, you'll be deported back to Canada. <laughs> now, you keep thinking of that. All right. Now, if you come back and you have the change, you get the television set. All right. Fine. Good luck. Fine. Out the door. Say goodbye to him, audience. <laughs> Oh, my. That ought to be very interesting, shouldn't it? And besides, ladies and gentlemen, 
This is absolutely on the level. There are no, no angles to this stunt. He is within his rights absolutely to do what we told him to do. But I can't help wondering whether or not tonight it's drafty in the Hollywood jail. <laughs> However, we'll see what happens. We don't know. The end of the program, by the way, we have one of our men following him. In case he doesn't come back, we'd like our thousand dollars back. <laughs> You know, in a few days, it's going to be Halloween. Yes, the old goblins will be rambling around your neighborhood. And you'll soon be seeing a big ad in Life magazine that'll show you a ghost eating a Milky Way candy bar. And the ad'll say, Haunting Flavor. Well, that ad'll give you an idea, I'm sure, that Milky Ways make a scrumptious Halloween treat. And actually, Milky Way is the best-like chocolate-covered candy bar in the whole world. You see, a Milky Way bar has a thick coating of honest-to-goodness milk chocolate over a chocolate malted milk nougat center. And then blended with that is a creamy, rich caramel layer. Yes, a Milky Way bar is a three-flavored hit. Now, for Halloween festivities, you serve Milky Ways sliced on a dish or in a big bowl, right in their wrappers for party refreshments. And when the doorbell starts peeling, you hand out Milky Ways to the little tricksters and treatsters. Buy Milky Ways for Halloween in the thrifty and convenient six-pack carton or the 24-bar box. Better get them tomorrow. Then you'll be ready for Halloween with a treat of the finest candy. Milky Ways made only by Mars. <laughs> Our next contestant is a beautiful, big, brown-eyed gal filled to the overflowing with the milk of human kindness. <laughs> well, here she comes now, Mrs. Hines. Mrs. Hines and Mr. Hines. Would you come over here, please, sir? First of all, we'd like you to have a Milky Way six-pack. Where are you from, Mr. Hines? Altus, Oklahoma. Altus is a town how big? About 12,000. And what do you do in Altus? I'm a salesman. What do you sell? Automobiles. Do you have any children? Have four. Four children. Gee, that's wonderful. Mrs. Hines, do you think that Mr. Hines loves you more than money? Well, how much money? <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of that, but I mean just money in general. A wife sometimes wonders if her husband, in, in the conquest and the fight for everyday sustenance, sometimes places money before his own wife's love. And tonight, we're going to find out. Mrs. Hines, if you'll just come right by here, would you step out a little bit, Mr. Hines? And Mr. Goodell, would you take Mrs. Hines back through our fence into our beautiful western scene here? And now, Mr. Hines, if you'll notice, your wife's head is being put through a fence, and then some little catches are being lowered, and her neck is being put right in the fence. Easy now, easy. Are you all right, Mrs. Hines? I hope so. She hopes so. Now, this is what's going to happen next, Mr. Hines. This is a very interesting stunt. Your wife is stuck there with her head out of the fence, and the cow's on the other side. This <laughs> Herman, stop. <laughs> Never can remember whether his name is Herman or Milton. Now keep still for a minute, because this is what's going to happen. Would you bring me out some of these items, please, boys? This is a beautiful lady's wristwatch worth about 50 or $60. You see that? You bet. This happens to be a very nice, beautiful waffle iron worth about 30 or $40. And this is a brand new Polaroid camera worth 85 or $90. That's about what that's worth. Now, Mr. Hines, this is the test of salesmanship and love of conquest in the business field versus love of home and wife, because you and I are going down in the audience, and we're going to let you sell these three items to anybody who wants to buy them. And you can sell them for as much or as little cash as you can get. If you can sell all three items in three minutes, fine. But if it takes you more than three minutes to sell these things for cash, which must be collected, your wife is going to be the recipient of what the kids used to call a cow lick. <laughs> ah, but now wait a minute. There's one thing you must know. What you get for these eight items, which are worth about $175 at retail, what you get for them in the audience is the prize you get tonight. So if you sell them for a dollar or two each, that's all you get. If you take a little more time and get a little more money, you get more money, but your wife is in danger. Now, do you see how this works? Very nice. Let's go down and see what happens. $160 worth of merchandise and three minutes to sell it. The three minutes starts right now. What do you want to start with first? I'll start with a watch. I'll give you $50. $10. How much? 
Fifty sold. For the watch. No, no, sir. no. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Man wanted to get fifty for the. Ten dollars. Ten? Well, tell him about the watch. Ten dollars. Look, this is a shockproof watch, and it, it's water resistant. It's a beautiful thing. You can't see it. Look at there. Yeah. How, I've got an offer of ten. How much? How much? Twelve dollars. Fifteen. Make it sixteen. Sixteen. Ten. No. Well, let's meet the lady. Would you yeah, stand up, please? What's your name? <laughs> Martha Roman. Where are you from? Evanston, That's Illinois. And do you have sixteen dollars? <laughs> yeah. Collect the money, please. Fifteen dollars. We got to collect the money. How's the time going, John? Two minutes. He has two minutes and fifteen seconds left to go. Have you gotten the money yet, Mr. Hines? Who wants the waffle alarm? Now, wait a minute. Where do you get the money? You must consummate each deal before we sell the next thing. Uh, now, wait a minute. We got a waffle iron here. Do you want to sell that next? Two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. We got a beautiful two. waffle iron. Let's go up the aisle here. How much? Five dollars. Pick somebody out and sell them. You got it. Hey, here's ten dollars right below you. Right here, ten dollars. Now wait a minute, get him up a little. Look, this thing costs about thirty, forty dollars. New. I don't mean you can cook grill sandwiches all that you can. Oh, yeah. make, make it twenty. Make it twenty. And really, it, it's a. It, you can see yourself. You can grill sandwiches, hot cheese. Are you a bachelor? Man, that would really work good. That, you get make some it, more dough. Make it fifteen. I'll let you have it. He got him up to eleven. Twelve dollars. You can have it. Well, uh, hurry up. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Let's get his name. What's your name? Ed McClure. Where are you from, Ed? <laughs> Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, boy. Give the man from Pittsburgh a nice round of applause. Uh, Twelve seconds. Uh, tw wait a minute. How much did you get? How much did you get from I him? I got 12 and... Uh... And, and you got to, uh, 15. 15. So far, you've made $27, and your wife is mooing. I mean, the, uh, Herman's mooing. <laughs> He's got a minute. Let's go over on this side. Uh, oh, Mr. Hines, I'd like to have you meet my wife, Mrs. Linkletter. Hello, honey. I didn't know you were that. This is my wife. And, uh, just a second, please. Tom, are the children all right there? Uh, tell... Would you uh, tell just a moment, uh, Mr. Hines... Let's not be impolite. This is my wife. And, uh, uh, honey, he wants to know the names of the children. Diane, Sharon, Robert, Dawn, and Blake. Would you be interested in learning how we met and fell in love? Mrs. Blake, later you can have this. It's 85 or 90. Just, oh, wait, wait, please, please. You're not, none of you are being, none of you are being polite to my wife. She doesn't come down to the show very often. Now, wait a minute. Yes. Yes? You time's up. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a moment. <laughs> Madam, it's too late. I'm sorry, it's too late. Mr. Hines, I am awfully sorry that a personal matter such as this interrupted your efforts to sell. So am I. And the only thing I can say is that you and I are going to have ringside seats for a most interesting operation. Let's go up and watch the cow licking. Well, um... Let's, uh, let's just go up here. Isn't it a shame? He did so well, too, at the start. And then suddenly we seem to run into some difficulty. Now, I don't know how you feel about this. You probably don't like it. A little short change on time. Well, those are some of the things that a salesman has to run into in everyday selling. Those are the problems of selling. Now, would you like to get your wife out of this predicament? Yeah, I believe I would. Well, I'm sure you would, and Mr. Hines, so would we. So we're going to let you take her place. <laughs> Just go right back there. Yes, that's right. Get her out. Mrs. Hines, you come in. And uh, now, Mrs. Hines, he did a good job until he got fouled up down there with a pretty girl he was talking to. It happened to be my wife. Now the tables are turned. I'm talking to his wife. And he's about to make the acquaintance of a pretty little brown-eyed miss with a strange silhouette. Now, Mr. Hines, you may never have had your face licked by a cow, but this is going to be an interesting thing to watch. Uh, what? Oh, you're putting salt right on his cheek. Turn his cheek. There, just put a little salt down. Now, now, now watch the cow. There he's got his nose in the bucket. Now watch it. Now bring the bucket up to his face. Here we go, right up there. Now watch it. There... Oh, he got a beautiful one. There you go. Oh, Miss 
Mr. Hines. I tell you, when you get back to Altus, Oklahoma, the cows will be lined up at the railroad track. All the cows will be lined up waiting to get their lick in. And Mrs. Mrs. Hines, I tell you, you are the one who was in jeopardy tonight, and so we're going to give you and the mister from People Are Funny, first of all, a beautiful People Are Funny game that you can play on the way back to Altus, and there it is. And secondly, a service for eight of international sterling silver in the stunning silver rhythm pattern in a handsome monogrammed chest. Compliments of Milky Way. Thanks. Goodbye and good luck. Before we went on the air this evening, as I always do, I asked among the audience for volunteers. We picked the young man who's about to come in and whom I haven't yet met myself. Would you send him in, please, boys, and I'll meet him. How do you do, young man? Gee, you're a big one. Uh, how tall are you? I'm 6'6". Six, six. And what's your name? My name is Vidge Hall. Before we start your stunt tonight, we'd like you to have a Milky Way six-pack, the best light chocolate-covered candy bar in the whole world. Uh, Mr. Hall, what do you do for a living? I, uh, I'm a salesman, Art. You're about 25? 25 years old. And you come from where? Monet, Missouri, originally. I've been Monette. out here about six months. Were you in the service? Yes, I spent two years as a special investigator with military intelligence. Now, when you volunteered tonight, did you have any idea what was going to happen to you? Are you willing to do anything? <laughs> I'm willing. I didn't know. Yeah. Can you go anywhere? Well, I mean, there's uh, no ties to hold you. No, no, nothing. You have no family, no fiancé, no debts, anything like that. No keep... fiancé. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. Have you ever heard the expression carrying coals to Newcastle? Yes. It's an expression That's meaning cool. taking something to some place where they don't need it. Right. right. Now, if you were going to go to uh, Paris, for instance, and take something to Paris, what would be comparable to carrying coals to Newcastle? Girls. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> what I had in mind was perfume. And coming in right now behind you is a bucket. A big bucket of My Sin perfume by Lan Van. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this whole bucket full sells for $20 an ounce. That's how much this perfume costs. Would you be willing to take this bucket of open bucket of perfume back to Paris where it came from if we gave you a free transatlantic plane ride to Paris? Oh, definitely, yes. You would? Yes, I'd gladly do it. Well, you can get away. Oh, de here is your ticket right there. Now, your plane leaves New York at noon one week from tomorrow. How does that sound? That sounds wonderful. Now, look, Vidge, we don't want you to spend a nickel of your own money on this trip. John, would you take... Where's your wallet? It's right here. Right here in the, uh, in the coat pocket. And you got any money? Any other money? Yeah. Some There's some down in his pants pocket. We'll take it Because we want this boy not to be encumbered with any expenses. <laughs> there goes his money. Now we have his wallet and we have his money. Now you're all set, except for one little thing. How are you going to get from Hollywood to New York? <laughs> this is the trick. You are going to hitchhike across the country, and uh, you're going to have to eat wherever you can. Do you not have any idea how you're going to eat? No. no. Well, we did. Boys... Bring out the bottles. We're putting a lay around his neck of 250 half-ounce empty bottles tied together with a ribbon. Now, look, when you fill one of these bottles with My Sin perfume, it is worth $10 a bottle. This is the actual truth, $10 a bottle. And as you go on your way, hitchhiking from Hollywood, New York, you just keep filling up the bottles and trading them in for whatever you want. Food, lodging, rides. You, you're a rich man. You got $2,500 in this bucket. Now remember that. Then when you get to New York, go to the Savoy Plaza Hotel. And uh, our representative will be there to analyze what's left in the bucket. Because we're not going to let you dilute it. In other words, he is going to measure what you have left of my sin perfume. Now get this. If you get to New York in a week, which you must do, and you get to the hotel, there are eight pints of perfume in here to start with. For every half pint 
that is left in this bucket, you will get one day in Paris with all expenses paid. So that if you didn't use any, you'd have 16 days. So the more you use, the less time you spend in Paris. But if you don't use a lot, you may not get to New York because the plane ticket cannot be delayed and you either take that plane or none. You got that? I've got it, yes. Yeah. Telephone us from New York if you reach there. How much perfume you have left will, will determine how much uh, time you stand in Paris. Good luck, boy. <laughs> Say goodbye to him, audience. Let's do that, though. Folks, I'm awfully enthusiastic about that idea I mentioned a little earlier. I mean about having Milky Ways for Halloween treats. We're doing it in the Linkletter household. Do it every year. We have five children, so naturally we picked up the thrifty box of 24 Milky Way bars. And another good Halloween suggestion, of course, is the Milky Way money-saving six-pack. Lots of folks are getting the Milky Way six-pack for Halloween. And think of it. When you buy a Milky Way carton or pack, you're getting the best, like, chocolate-covered candy bar in the whole world. You see, a Milky Way bar has an extra thick coating of honest-to-goodness milk chocolate with a double helping of chocolate malted milk nougat inside. Plus, there's something more. Blended with that fluffy nougat is a layer of golden, creamy caramel. Milky Way is grand three-flavored eating. Now, for Halloween, you get the Milky Way six-pack or the 24-bar box. Both are convenient. They'll save you money. And then when your doorbell rings, you'll make a hit with those little spooks because you'll have a delicious Milky Way bar to offer. For wonderful Halloween fun, remember to get Milky Ways made by Mars. Time now toward the end of the program to find out what our young Canadian, he was to go up and see what would happen if a man who was dressed like a bum and had a $1,000 bill only would buy a hot dog or gum or ice cream and eat it and then try to pay for it in a little shop that wouldn't have the change for the thousand. So bring him back out, and let's find out what happened. Now, your name again? Joe Schaefer. You went out, and you went up to the hot dog stand. Yes, the hamburger stand up there, and I sat down and asked for a hot dog, see? And uh, I was going to take a bite before I gave him the money, because I knew if I gave him the money first, well, I wouldn't get the hot dog. So I took a bite uh, of the hot dog. Meanwhile, I sent him to get me a Coke, see? And by that time, I had eaten half the hot dog, and he came back, and he said, uh, 37 cents or something. So I said, uh, well, here, sir, I only have a $1,000 bill somebody presented to me, and I'm poor. Otherwise, I haven't got a cent. And he said, uh, well, I don't know. And he got his hand on a bill, and he grabbed it, threw it in the register, and he says, ma'am, when you come back with the 37 cents, you get your $1,000. Until then, you're not getting nothing. So I, what could I do? There was a man following me from your studio. I had You took my money away. That's right. I had him come up. He paid the money, and I got the $1,000 bill back. And then I hurried... Wait to... a minute. This is an unthought-of twist to the stun. This guy up there is smarter than Dillinger. <laughs> and twice as alive, I might add. He got the dough, put it in the till, and wouldn't give it to you, and you until you got money. Yeah. That's blackmail. I didn't know why... Why didn't you call a cop? There was, I didn't see any. See, and, and anyway, I put it, if I would uh, ask him for it back, I wanted to get going up the street and win this television set, you know? All right, so where'd you go next? Well, I went up to the corner. It was an old drugstore. So I went in there, and I asked for some cigarettes. And uh, meanwhile, I'm opening. I says, a package of matches. So she gives it to me. Then I says, another package. I didn't have them opened yet. So you got the cigarettes all open and yeah. torn. So you I... got one out, and then what did you give her the thousand? Well, I give her the thousand. I says, I'm sorry, ma'am. This is all I have. I appreciate it. It's very important that I get a change. I want to buy something else. So she says, I'm sorry. I says, well, the cigarettes, then I could have them. She says, well, just a minute. She called the manager, see? Yeah. The manager comes, and I says, I buy this package of cigarettes, and I only have a $1,000 bill. And he takes it, and he looks at it. I don't think he's seen one before, see? <laughs> and, and yeah, he's just, a, he's just one of those poor people, yeah. So, so anyway, he said... Uh, I can't change that. I haven't got that much money in the place. I says, well, I want the cigarettes, and I've got money to pay for it. He says, well, here, take it. I says, there's an officer outside. There was one standing outside, a sergeant, you know, standing outside the door. Yeah. And I says, well, this is legal money, and uh, I want cigarettes. Call the officer, and he'll examine the bill. It's real, I told him. And he said, no, I don't want no part of $1,000. He says, take the cigarettes, goodbye. <laughs> 
Well, then I want to get the television set in mind. You know, I ran like heck down the street, and I went to this Rancho Market next door here, and I went right back through the grocery department to the delicatessen, and I opened the thing, and I grabbed out a package of cheese, and I opened it up, and I started eating it. There is a smelly trick, if I've ever heard one. And what happened then? Well, I'll tell you. I opened a package. There was a big lineup at both uh, cashiers, and I was in a hurry. I told the people if they'd mind only got a small package of cheese, I eat half of it already. If they'll let me in front of the line, oh, yeah, okay. So I get in there, and I'm next, and uh, the fellow says, how much is that? And he looks at the wrapper. He says, 20 cents. Yeah. I says, uh, well, sir, I only have a $1,000 bill. And I, by the way, I better give you the $1,000 bill before I forget, huh? You didn't get a change? No, I didn't. Oh. You, know, you mean you... even the ranch market next door, there's great big monster markets? Wait till I tell you what happened. I, I said to him, would you please, it, it's life and death to me. I have to have that change. I ate part of the cheese. I just have to have a change. So he calls the manager. The manager says, no, no, no. I says, come here, please. So the manager comes over. And I said, please change a 1000 It means everything to me. And I got some... I got some cheese here and I ate half of it. He says, look, I'd be very glad to change it for you, but I haven't got that amount of money in the whole place, he says. I says, maybe you could scrape it up somewhere. He says, I'm sorry. I says, well, the cheese, I, I'm still hungry, I told him. You're you know? still eating the cheese. So I'm still eating. I walk away and he says, hey, just a minute, come here. And he grabs the cheese from me and he says, we don't do business around this place like that. He says, you go get your money, you could have your cheese back. But I couldn't get that. Thing and he took the from... cheese back. Yeah. And when you left with your thousand, yeah. the manager is standing there eating the rest of the cheese, huh? No, but I haven't got the cheese and I haven't got the bill change. Well, you, well you did a good try. I, uh, under the rules of the contest, you didn't get a change. You went to the biggest places, the big, one of the biggest stores in town and one of the biggest drug stores. But as a consolation prize, <clears throat> I want you to have a beautiful Stromberg Carlson Hi Fayette. That's a very beautiful reproducing machine. There's nothing finer than a Stromberg Carlson. Compliments of Milky Way. Thank you. Goodbye. Very and here's cigarettes. I don't smoke. Well, you gotta admit that young fellow really gave it a college try, didn't he? But he didn't get it changed, and that was the luck of the draw, even though he tried hard. He did get a very nice prize, however. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to tune us in and find out how the young man is doing hitchhiking across the United States with an open bucket filled with $2,500 worth of My Sin perfume. See what happens when he gets to New York. People Are Funny is brought to you by Forever Yours and Milky Way Candy Bars. Remember Forever Yours for dark chocolate with creamy vanilla nougat and Milky Way for milk chocolate with chocolate malted milk nougat. Next week, People Are Funny will be presented by Tony. If your telephone rang five minutes from now and somebody invited you to a party tonight, would your hair look its loveliest? Would it be looking its best with soft, lovely waves? No? Well, then, party or not, you owe it to yourself and your everyday good looks to have a new self-neutralizing prom home permanent. You just choose the prom waving lotion that's right for you. There's prom super, prom regular, and prom very gentle. All you do is use the prom waving lotion. Fifteen minutes later, rinse with clear water. Mm, that's all. Prom does the rest. Prom neutralizes itself automatically while your hair dries naturally right there on the curlers. And the results are lovely, long-lasting, natural-looking waves with springy end curls. And if the phone doesn't ring in five minutes, it will later. And the prettier you look every day, the happier you'll be when the phone does ring. Good night. This program was transcribed from Hollywood. Goodbye from Hollywood. See you.